so welcome to episode three of the Rim War playthrough. If you missed episode two, then I recommend watching that. Or if you just don't care, at the end of episode two, we conquered the Viking capital, and here's our current base now. We took their base over. It's kind of like a role play base. I don't know if it's all that effective at optimizing our wealth here because everything's really spread out, and there's a lot of space that we're just not using. Because we have so many structures and we're occupying so much space, it is increasing our wealth. And speaking of wealth, here was our wealth at our old settlement, 93k. After moving bases, our wealth is now 143k. We did pick up quite a few items, like we got some nice legendary stuff, but like we can see down here, our building wealth went up by quite a bit. It was 15k, now it's up to 33.7k, and like I just don't know if it's worth. I like, guess we are getting a lot more space, but we're not really optimizing our space here, so staying here long term might not be the best decision. Originally in episode 1, I was using this hot seat dynamic storyteller switcher mod where it would switch the storyteller every quadrum. It turns out this mod is not too compatible with Rim War, so we're not going to be using it. And we were using the storyteller Freya Fierce. I don't like the fact that she locks us to medieval tech though, as I want to eventually advance. And so we're going to change our storyteller to Perry Persistent. The idea with Perry is he gives a large amount of events. Now I don't really know the spread on positive or negative events, but we'll be testing him out in this video. He also allows us to double our population, so the game's not going to pound us as hard for having too many people. I mean, the game's already going to pound us because we have a 500% threat scale and our wealth is extremely high and we're going to try to fix that immediately. That's going to be our first plan of action here is to load up everything that has pretty much any value that we're not currently using on a caravan. And we're going to load up a lot of our high tier guns and our high tier armor. This gets me into the next modification we're going to do for this episode, which is we have a mod that makes it so we cannot use weapons or armor unless we have the required tech and we pretty much have no tech. We can't even use like this great bow yet. We are going to keep this master with great bow though because it's a pretty early tech. We also have a legendary one that we cannot use. Great bow's here. It's right after recurve bow and that's a tech we'd obviously really like to get early on. We loaded up all those goods on a caravan with all of our Thrombonians, just because Thrombonians can carry a lot of stuff. And we sent them over to this nearby medieval faction, Mosquito's Palace by the Field, which is now neutral. It was a hostile medieval faction that got taken over by a neutral one, and so we can trade with these guys now. They do actually have a few slaves, and I'm wondering if any of these guys are any good. This dude Grimhild would be an amazing researcher. He's got a burning passion for intellectual, and he's very neurotic, so he works much quicker. The only problem is that he's 66 years old that's a bit old this other guy sage doesn't seem all that good he's good at cooking and intellectual heinsen is actually a good archer he does have a burning passion for shooting and he's perceptive so he gets a little bit more shooting accuracy and even though we don't really need him around camp it might not be bad just to pick up an extra archer i will say he can't haul or clean though and like we don't need him to do anything else really like i guess mining but other than that like we don't need another cook ah, yeah i think we're not gonna pick him up let's just start selling a bunch of goods to these guys we have just so many things things that we don't need right now like a lot of components these advanced components we kind of need the cloth actually but like the wool we can make clothing out of this stuff but we just want to lower our market value right now so we're not going to worry about crafting anything early on in the episode later on we'll probably worry about it we just ended up buying out all their silver and we're going to keep moving there's a lot of other colonies that we can trade with we're actually on day 33 now and i'm hoping that this nearby industrial faction has changed their goods they do change every couple weeks i think and it's been a month after dumping off some of our goods I sent Dumangolo back home and our caravan's still moving really fast. And the reason why I sent her home is she needs to start cranking out short bows. We're going to have her try to make a really good one for Kwai Waifu as she cannot use our legendary or masterwork bow. And the first one she made is a good one. We're going to try to get an excellent or masterwork here. Excellent's actually really achievable. There's a 24% chance for excellent, but masterwork is only 1.6% chance. So yeah, masterwork's probably not happening. I'll definitely be happy with just an excellent one. And then maybe we'll have her start making melee weapons. Another thing that's increasing our market value by a ton is this Rebian Wrangle. Because she's a Rebian, her base value is 5k. And in the last episode, I was thinking, should we sell her off? If we do decide to buff her up and we give her a bunch of these bloodstones, which right now she's creating another one, we've been having her just butcher up these humans. I guess you get one bloodstone, by the way, from butchering up just regular people, but two from butchering up Rebians. If we do have her make a bunch of offerings, which like we could use these for Kawai Waifu and buff up her stats, but in order to get to Soul Reap 8, I believe we need 32 bloodstones. In order to get wrangle to soul reap three it's actually only going to take two getting her to soul reap four is only going to take four and then getting her to soul reap five is going to take eight 
because it doubles every time. But after doing that, that increased her movement and manipulation, and I guess it increased her market value, by the way. I was talking to the creator of this mod about the balance, and I guess he did add more market value for more levels of Soul Reap. I still do think that like $100 is not enough. He seemed really hesitant to not want to crank up the market value too much, but he did also agree that the damage multiplier for the Revian tier 9, it makes it so you take 50% less damage. Like, yeah, that's pretty high. My thought process, though, with the mod right now and the way it currently is, is, is that if Revians are worth 5k then we're gonna be getting like an extra two raiders or they're just gonna have higher tier stuff so I think yeah having the 5k market value is an okay fix for now I'm not sure what he's put the added market value at Soul Reap 9 for if it's like an added 2k then maybe I'll be able to lower the base cost of Revians and holy crap we're getting sieged and yeah it looks like events are working and Perry Persistent has not sent us any good events yet he's gonna really send us a siege for our first event then again we haven't had any negative events for a while we got a Manhunter pack on day 27 and we did a quest for that so we knew it was coming. But yeah, so we're on day 34 now and after sending out that caravan, our wealth went down by quite a bit. It's down to 97k so the siege shouldn't be that strong, at least compared to what it was going to be. And okay, never mind. So that might be GG actually. So after inspecting these guys and seeing that they have LMGs, power armor, HMGs, lever action rifles, a sniper rifle on this freaking girl, another sniper rifle over here, we got a minigun, we got another sniper rifle. After inspecting their weapons and armor and doing a bit of number crunching, I ran some simulations on my supercomputer. I ran about a million simulations and in every single one we lose horribly. Because of that we're packing everything up and we're getting the heck out of dodge. I'm just glad this is a siege and this is not a raid because they're going to be sieging our base for a while and they're actually not even building the mortars yet. They have to cut down these trees, so it's buying us a lot of time. We're going to form multiple caravans, so the first one is about to make it out, and Domingo is in a really bad mood. Her mood's actually going down to zero, but they made it out, thankfully, so everyone's safe, except for Ross right now is not safe. We're having her make her own caravan. We're just going to grab a bunch of extra stuff that we were not able to pick up. Mainly, we're going to try to grab as many building materials as we can, and there's a mortar, and let's grab like these tool cabinets. We can't build these right now, so it's going to be nice to have them. Let's grab one smithy, too. It's not necessary to have multiple smithies. We can also grab some of these shelves as well. We can use these for storage. And yeah, we grabbed most of the valuable stuff. We did leave quite a few beds and just a lot of random stuff that would have been nice to bring along, but we just couldn't carry it all. And Ross is gonna be the last one to leave. Thankfully, they did end up choosing the north side of the base as the caravan leaving spot, and we didn't have to run through the raiders. Ross is gonna meet up with our caravan, and I'm not sure where we want to go now. Over here to the west, there's another polar bear clan Viking settlement. We took out their capital earlier. It does have 3k settlement points though and that means they're going to be really strong. I believe this capital only had like 1700. I don't know why their main capital had less settlement points but yeah those guys are going to be pretty hard to take on. I'm thinking it's going to actually be pretty hard to attack anybody right now because again we don't have any tech. We're only using bows and just really low tier stuff so maybe we just kind of chill out for now and we settle just somewhere that's got some kind of mountain so we can build into the mountain and have a nice defensible base. So our caravan trade with the industrial faction of Thedon, but they have not replenished their goods yet with anything new, which is kind of surprising. It's been a while. To the north, this medieval faction actually has some nice stuff, though. Mainly, they got four slaves. We got Philosopher, who we don't really want. Yoon, again, is not someone that we need. She's good at cooking, but the most expensive one, India, does have the Dexterous trait, which is really nice. It increases global work speed, lowers aiming time, but she's not a good shooter. She was also an animal lover, but so is Orange Dog, and Orange Dog actually has a burning passion for animals. Since he's got a burning passion for animals and he's an animal lover, he's going to be exceptionally good at taming and training up animals. And he also gets more animal gather yield, like more milk from cows, more wool from alpacas, etc. Another thing I like about this dude is he's going to be working around the clock because he's a quick sleeper. He doesn't need to get much sleep and he'll just be running around the map just taming and training up animals for the most part. So yeah, we're going to pick up Orange Dog for 1800 and we're going to continue selling off a lot of just random goods we have. We've got a lot of heavy fur. I thought we sold off all of our fur, but I guess not. I I don't know if we should sell off all this steel. It's really slowing us down. If we sell it all, we'll increase our movement speed from 33 to 42. And like, we don't really need steel right now anyways. How about this plasteel as well? We got 280 of it. Yeah, it's gonna increase our movement speed as well. We also sold off a Psychic Sooth Pulsar for 300 more and that was enough to buy out all their silver. Now the question is, which way do we go? So West is not looking so good. There's just a bunch of hostile factions West and then we got some Empire factions. But we can't trade with these guys right now anyways, so there's really no point.
point to the southeast there are a lot of friendly factions and like they're pretty high tier it's just that they are in the rainforest which i don't know if we want to settle in the rainforest it does make movement more difficult on roads for example although during the winter time they're not going to be too heavily slowed down because it's pretty warm down here there's not going to be any snow if we do go north a bit there actually won't be any snow up here there's some temperate forests but the minimum temperature is 44 degrees fahrenheit 7 celsius so there's not going to be any snow up here either and up here to the north there are quite a few friendly factions like we got three industrial factions pretty close to each other and we could try to settle kind of in the middle of these guys like if we could settle on this mountain tile that'd be ideal it's one two three four i think it's actually not too close to this industrial faction as we were heading north to our next destination we decided to trade with this other medieval faction and they have three more prisoners this dude's good at art he's also very neurotic so he works quicker but we already have an artist it says that yellow the assassin has a revian childhood and adulthood but he's not a revian dude does have 13 shooting 16 melee though and he also is nimble so it gives him more melee a dodge chance this guy would be a good dude to have around he's also a rock hound which increases his mining speed and mining yield he's just slower at doing everything else but yeah so we could have him do mining around the base and when we get attacked we can have him do combat i think we will pick this guy up he is kind of old 52 but we do need all the help we can get right now this guy finn vidson's also pretty good he's got 10 shooting as well as a minor passion for intellectual he is a wimp though which lowers his pain shock threshold so with just a couple hits he's gonna go down this trait does increase his movement speed though so he'd be really good at kiting at least until he gets hit i think we'll pick this guy up as well that'll just be another fighter that we can use in a pinch and another researcher it's gonna cost 4k for both those guys and we're gonna start selling off all of our high-tech weapons because these are increasing our wealth by quite a bit we're gonna pretty much sell everything except for our masterwork and legendary great bows we're also gonna sell off this marine armor for 1k it's unfortunate we can't use this anymore this chitin guardian armor chitin is a really bad material for armor for the most part it is good for walls but it really does not offer a lot of base protection steals much better we're continuing to head north we got one more faction to trade with there are some scouting parties as well that we we're gonna run into this could be bad this industrial faction unfortunately does not have any luciferium we're down to our last four i was really hoping they'd have some they will buy a lot of our smoke leaf joints though let's sell them like 140 of these these guys will also buy our cataphract helmet for 400 and then i think we might actually want to sell all of our sculptures to these guys i was gonna hold on to them but they have some really nice stuff and i want to get all the stuff we can so we're gonna sell all of our gold in these sculptures and mainly i want to be able to pick up this arcotech arm it's 4.2k and then these guys also do have a psychic pacifier so we already had one and we never used it i don't know what happened to it i think when we were out on a caravan i left it at the hideout quest these guys also have a bunch of medicine we're gonna buy as much as we can we actually don't have much silver left we could sell some more smoke leaf joints though we don't need that many smoke leaf joints and we'll just grab nine medicine i guess and now we're on to probably engage this scouting party of the polar bear clan there's actually two scouting parties we're about to run into and i'm not sure how this whole thing's gonna go their power is not that high though they only have a combat power of a thousand i mean i guess that's pretty high still like the raid we did at the end of last episode their combat power is like 1750 or wait i guess they're not gonna engage us or yeah they're engaging us we could just give them two of our tech prints but i kind of like the idea of fighting these guys because i think we can beat them all right so here they come and we do have a bit of a problem here so our prisoners are just kind of chilling in the open they're probably screwed here Dan Woody's completely naked. I think he's a nudist. And yeah, he got knocked out. He's going to bleed out in 13 hours, which this fight's not going to take 13 hours. So we'll probably be able to save him. The rest of our colonists are taking cover behind this mountain over here. And these guys are kind of splitting up, which is good. They do have a lot of ranged weapons. So we're going to try to get these guys in melee as, yeah, we don't have a lot of ranged weapons. There's three raiders down here to the south that are all alone. And so we're actually going to have everyone just charge them. And we're going to try to take out Rat first. Rat, by the way, does have a legendary trait, Aphrodite's Grace. So she's got a bunch more armor. But other than that, she's not that good at combat. She's only got like four melee she finally went down we did kill her unfortunately these guys are now starting to come in from the north and so we're gonna have everyone just actually do whatever they want we put them all on attack mode and we don't even have to micro them at this point kenzo's the only one that's not gonna fight because kenzo is a wimp and he's incapable of combat and we killed another one of them because we got that little bloodlust thing 
and waifu got another mood boost killed another person very nice so some of our dudes are actually using some really good equipment like Finn Vidson actually is using a bunch of nice equipment that we shouldn't be able to use but we just picked a guy up and this is the stuff he came with it would make sense that he can use that equipment anyways assuming that he came equipped with it as a slave which by the way I don't know why they're selling slaves with full sets of equipment but I guess that was just part of the deal and very nice we knocked out the last dude or we didn't knock out the last dude there's still a dub up here left. We ended up knocking out two of these guys. So Yuoli is a shooting enthusiast. He gets a little bit of extra shooting accuracy. He is abrasive though, and he's a misandrist. So keeping him around men would be really bad. He's just going to get into fights a lot. And what about Blue? Blue is overweight, which increases the amount of meat that we can harvest from Blue. But that's about the only positives. It lowers his global work speed and movement speed. He's also a gourmet, of course. If he's overweight, he's got to be eating a lot of food. He's got to be enjoying it i like his skill set too like he's good at planting and cooking that's definitely accurate i don't know this guy kind of sucks like he's a pyromaniac too i think we're just gonna let him bleed out since that battle was a caravan battle we can immediately reform our caravan we don't have to waste time to pick everything up and okay this is not good a lot of our people have injuries and there's another scouting party coming in here we're gonna have everyone force march blitz over to this thrombonian colony and we're gonna try to take refuge here looks like we might be able to avoid the scouting party they have to get like four tiles away I think and they can ambush us two three four oh they're so close can we get in here though oh, like it's actually really close it doesn't look like it's close but it is okay yeah, we made it over here and we can attack these guys perfect we were chilling in the thrombonian village for just a little bit when I noticed that the scouting party stopped moving on the map it was really late at night and so I guess they were resting we grabbed everyone and we force marched through the night and we did a bit of an evasive maneuver going east a bit and then north to our destination of this mountain tile all right so we rebuilt our base and as I was about to do a little tour we ended up researching electricity which we're nearly I'd be really hyped about this except for we don't need electricity electricity for anything right now. We're just looking for weapon upgrades and that one took forever by the way. Though our research is random it does cost the amount of tech required for whatever tech we research and yeah that took 3200 tech. The tech we want right now really bad is smithing. If we can get that that'd be amazing or recurve bow into great bow would be good. We've had Domangolo just crank out bows and she made a couple excellent ones. This one does have a poisonous modifier which gives the target toxic buildup whenever they're hit and it's also got a heavier enchant and then we also got this concussive short bow which gets two more damage because the concussive enchant gives it 15% more damage. The cooldown is increased but it can stun the target. Again they are just short bows though so they're not super amazing. So when we were starting to build the base I sent Ross, Ekim, and then I sent Kwai Waifu in here too. Kwai Waifu was hunting for all these meals. We got 10 left and then Ross is our builder. She was building a bunch and then Ekim was plant cutting. We sent them away though because they were increasing our colony's wealth by too much and until we get them some better equipment we should not have them in the base because like we can see up here this is when they were in the base our wealth was 50k but then down here when they left our wealth went down to 20k and we got still five dudes in here but yeah we got our dining room slash bedroom slash research room over here and we have this chunk in here that's really lowering the beauty of this room we gotta haul this out of here we really need to get some art in here we just don't have an artist that we've recruited yet we sent out the other half of our settlement over to this nearby industrial faction and thankfully these guys do have luciferium we don't have any money though is the only thing but we got like a bunch of this rhinoceros leather some smoke leaf joints will sell we got a lot of beer and just random goods i guess and then down here a couple of our slaves had this medieval equipment that they took off for whatever reason and they wouldn't put it back on so we're going to sell all that these boots as well mainly we want all this luciferium that's going to be all of our money right there so the colony we traded with was this industrial colony of colome and to the east a bit only two tiles away there's the revian capital and we're going to try to do a recon mission with kwai waifu and ross so after entering the capital, the Revians are apparently sieging us. The counterforce they're sending to stop us is, I guess, a siege. I'm guessing one of these guys has got to be pretty good. Like, we got Tiger over here, and I'm already noticing she has more than three. Yep, okay, she has Soul Reap 9. I was just looking at their tails, and Tiger has three that we can see, but then there's more if she turns. But yeah, Tiger is the Revian leader. She's got 20 shooting, 20 melee. She's got her nine tails with Soul Reap 9, and this is increasing her market value by 6,400, it says on here. If we look at her market value, though, 
though, it says her market value is only 6k, so I'm not sure what's going on with that, because like her base market value is 5k, plus Soul Reap 9, that should be 11.4k, but for some reason the Soul Reap market value is not affecting her final market value. Yeah, overall this girl would be amazing. She has 153% manipulation, because of Soul Reap 9 it increases her manipulation by 40%, and her consciousness by 25%, and lowers her incoming damage by 50. That combined with Tough would make it so she's not taking much damage at all. She does have a left shoulder scar, but we could give her an Arcotech arm, and that would increase her manipulation by even more. She would be a freaking beast in combat. Alright, so these Revians are setting up their siege, and what I'm thinking right now is this is actually really cheesable. So what's actually nice about these guys is they aren't high tier anymore. They used to be super high tier, and I was really not a fan of that, but looks like the mod creator made them more tribal-ish, because yeah, they're only using medieval weapons. But yeah, we're just gonna start tagging these guys, and I think this would be really cheesable because they dropped in a bunch of meals, like they got 12 packaged survival meals here, 66 packaged survival meals over here. If we wanted to, we could just farm packaged survival meals this way by attacking these guys and then, okay, nice. We've annoyed them to the point where they're attacking us. And now we're gonna have them hopefully all aggro on Kwai Waifu, which it looks like that's what they're gonna do. For the most part, not all of them are though. We got two stragglers over here that were attacking Ross. Oh crap, and then other guys are attacking us too. Okay, here we go. Go for Kwai Waifu. We got Ross over here who's hopefully gonna be able to sneak on by. And yeah, they're all on Kwai Waifu. She's so quick though. Meanwhile, in the northeast corner of the map, we got Ross who's able to just grab all this stuff. A bunch of meals, a lot of steel components. And we had Ross drop the Psychic Pacifier. We're gonna use it on Tiger who is in front because being that she's Soul Reap 9, she gets extra movement speed, which is really good. I really hope this works. Oh no, don't tag her. Okay, activate Psychic Pacifier on Tiger in a second here. I think now is good. Please don't get brain damage. She got brain damage, I think. Yep, she got a brain scar. It's only one damage, but she's burning is the only thing. Wait, these guys had to fight. Okay, wait, get out. Yes, yeah, she made it. And then Ross made it out too. Okay, awesome. Ooh, that was a little bit crazy. And yeah, it sucks that Tiger got a brain scar. It's only a one damage scar. So it's like, I don't know, did we give her Luciferium? As we were heading home, we got ambushed by 82 Revia. Okay, we're just gonna give up and pass by. Oh, it was this warband that caught us. That kind of sucks because we were going in a complete opposite direction and they had just come out of their capital. We didn't lose much though. We lost a tech print, which we didn't really care about too much. And then uh, I think they took one Luciferium. Oh, and they also got our Master Regret bow that actually kind of sucks it wasn't our legendary one thankfully though so right now while our weapon tech is really low tier we're doing kind of a nomadic play style and we're not entering our colony with our more high value people instead we went back to tesho born and we've been dragging around two prisoners eubanks was the revian who is actually really good at arts she's got eight art and she's a tortured artist it's just that since she can't do combat i don't think it's worth to have a revian around that's going to be increasing our wealth by 5k it's just too much so we're going to dump her off for 27 700. I also noticed she had some clothing. Let's strip her of that before we sell her off because yeah, clothing does not increase her market value. We will keep her on Dinwoody though. He has pretty low market value and the dude's really good at social. We're also going to solve all these components we picked up from the siege. That's going to allow us to afford this crypto hatchet. We already have one of these, but we're going to pick up another one. These are really expensive as they cost 1940, but since they cause hypothermia, I think they're really effective and they can be used with shields. I would also like to pick up this synthetic kidney for 1,079. One of our colonists is missing one. We can afford that if we just get 83 more. Let's sell off this heavy crossbow. We can't use it right now. And then some of this clothing, I guess. This wool hood. And then this poor bedroll, and that's gonna be enough. I did forget that we do need medicine though. We're just gonna sell off all this steel and we're gonna buy as much medicine as we can get. Meanwhile, back at base, we got three research tables set up and we're desperately trying to get to the next tech. We also got four of these chem fuel myrmidons outside of our base and they're manhunting, but they won't come in. If we do get raided, then these things will fight the raiders. The reason why there was only four of these is because our wealth was really low. It's actually really high now because Kwai Waifu's in the base and Tiger's also in the base. Just them in the base is over doubling our net worth. And we actually don't even need Kwai Waifu here. I was gonna have her take on these beetles, but we don't need to take them on. We're gonna have her just form a caravan and leave. And she's going south through the insect cavern, which is fine. She's not aggroing the insects. Okay, that's okay. Anyway, Kenzo already installed the Arcotech arm in Tiger's left shoulder. Okay, well, I was not paying attention. She did have that scar, which was lowering her manipulation by a bit. So we gave her the Arcotech arm we picked up earlier, and this girl's gonna be a beast. We can't check her stats yet because she's currently sedated, but we'll check her out when 
once she wakes up. The person that lost their kidney was Malowitz, and this is apparently lowering his consciousness, movement, manipulation, all that stuff. But mainly his blood filtration, if he gets sick, then he's probably gonna die. And I don't really want the kid to die, like he's got 10 intellectual. Other than that, he's not that good. I mean, he does have this trait very enduring, which lowers his mental break threshold by a lot. And he's a nudist, so as long as we keep him nude, he's happily nude right now, that gives him a 20 bonus mood. He's never having a mental breakdown, he's full-time researching, we just don't want the kid to die. So we're gonna give him that kidney, and with this, I guess it's just one medicine. I don't think there's any chance of this failing, because Kenzo does have 17 medical. The bed has a 99% surgery success chance factor. The room is not clean. Let's see if we can clean this up before we're done with the surgery. Yellow is on the case. And after cleaning that mess, it went up to 100%. There's other factors like medicine and then Kenzo's medical skill, but yeah, I don't think there's any chance that this fails. And it worked. He's now got a improved kidney. And yes, I did increase his market value by 710 because he now has a synthetic kidney, but I think it's worth it because, I mean, researchers right now are really important to have. We got a shuttle crash event, which is not optimal because there are a bunch of manhunting creatures outside of our base. We got four people that we could potentially rescue. So we got two Revians, the first one being Shiver, who does not seem that good. Again, we're really picky with Revians. How about Breland? She's decent in melee and she's a brawler. And she's got a melodic voice, which gives her more social impact. And she's pretty, which is going to mean people are going to like her even more. Maybe this girl could be our new warden for now. We also got a couple humans over here. Boris, who's decent at mining, cooking animals. We got all that stuff covered. And what about Tomo? He's got 16 crafting. Tortured artist, by the way. He is neurotic too, so it's going to increase his global work speed and he's going to go into mental breakdowns easier. But you kind of want to have mental breakdowns with tortured artists because when they come out of the mental breakdown, they can make legendaries. Okay, yeah, we're going to try to save Tomo and Breland as well. We're going to have Kwai Waifu try to aggro these stupid bugs onto her. I don't really know how strong they are. They don't seem that strong though. We've only hit this thing a couple times, then it's already pretty weak to have these guys try to run by. Okay, it's aggroed on these guys, but we'll have Kawaii Waifu try to just come up here and distract. And there's a couple more bugs as well. Oh, okay, we killed this one and it blew up. That's not good, because there's a lot of forest over here. That's actually really bad. We're gonna have to send people out here to extinguish that fire, I think. And then these other ones are gonna blow up too. Oh no, this is gonna be so much fire that we're gonna have to extinguish. Okay, Waifu, can you please just hit that thing a bunch? Oh, it's raining! Holy crap, this is so perfect. What are the chances of that? It just magically rains. The Merald gods are with us today. This stupid insect is aggroing on these dudes, and this is bad if it blows up on these guys. No. <laughs> That was close. It almost blew up on Breland. So Tomo's gonna die in three hours. Dimengolo does have five medical though. I think she's gonna be able to stabilize him up. The thing about this rain too is like it doesn't rain here much so it just feels like it's scripted. Like it feels like I went to dev mode and made it rain. And there's the last one. So Kawhi Waifu's in a horrible mood. We're actually gonna have her finish off Shiver and she's gonna be really happy about that and that's gonna boost her mood by quite a bit actually. She killed someone and then witnessed death. We should have actually stripped that girl by the way. She might have had some stuff we could have used because she had a death acidifier. All of her gear went poof when we killed her. Domingolo was successful at saving Tomo. We're gonna rescue him and don't look Domingolo at what Kawhi Waifu's about to do. Nope, and Boris died while we were stripping him. Um, so we're about to research our next tech. Holy crap. What are the chances of that? We got literally electricity and then microelectronics. Yeah, okay, that was 6k tech. Like I'm sitting here wondering when we're gonna get the next tech. Lo and behold, it's freaking microelectronics, which is gonna make it so we can build high-tech research benches and we can research quicker. In order to do that though, we'd have to set up an electrical system. And I don't know if we wanna do that yet. It's gonna increase our wealth and we don't really have any steel or components lying around. All right guys, good job on the really high tier techs, but can we just chill out for a little bit and go for some simpler ones? And yeah, it looks like the next tech's going really quick. After only a few hours, we're already a quarter of the way done. This one's actually going real quick. And it is finally, we got Recur Bow. Okay, we can start making some tier two bows, which are significantly better than the short bows as they have 26 range, a bit more damage. The short bows only have 23 range. They have three less damage as well. I'm not sure if it's gonna be worth it to start cranking out Recur Bows though, because we're kind of low on wood and we did make a few excellent short bows. And it's kind of hard for us to get wood right now because we don't have anyone that's all they good at planting back at base. 
We got a quest and a Fearless Clutch Mother event at the same time, actually. So the quest is a incapacitated refugee quest, and it's in the middle of Revian territory. And then like Euphorland's pretty high tech. We don't want to mess with these guys. We're not going to try to rescue that person. The next tech we researched was Watermill Generator, which unfortunately is fairly useless to us as we have some water way up here. But if we built a generator up here in the middle of nowhere, I'm pretty sure raiders would just destroy it immediately. We also do have a merchant entering our territory, and it's walking right by the Fearless Clutch. Mother. Oh, and yeah, it's actually aggro on the trader, I think. Or is it? Oh yeah, nice. It's actually going for the muffalo. That's perfect. And never mind, it ended up getting taken out pretty easily. I wish it took out their muffalo, because I guess this was a wine trader and they had 143 wine and a bunch of silver. A bunch of grapes too. And there we go, another tech researched basic furniture. That just allows us to build simple beds and a one by one table. We can already build tables though. It's a weird tech. It does lead to complex furniture though, which allows us to build a lot more stuff. We sent Tiger in and Kwai Waifu to take care of the clutch mother. And I forgot to show you guys her stats after the anesthetic wore off. With her new architect arm, she now is 186% manipulation, which is quite a bit. We also gave her this crypto hatchet, and she should be doing a lot of melee DPS. It says she's only doing six, but I think that's still quite a bit. I'm not sure how the DPS is calculated. The axe does have a good amount of armor pen too, 30%. I think we're also going to have her take this Luciferium, so that's going to be basically four people that are going to be hooked on Luciferium, because one of our Thrombonians is hooked on it, and that basically counts as two people. But yeah, she's going to take it. That's going to increase her manipulation even more, up to 199%. And her melee DPS went up to six 0.05. Again, that doesn't seem like that much, but we'll see how things play out once we get a tester in combat. So I thought we'd test our strength a little bit, and we sent our caravan that's just kind of been chilling outside of our base. With all of our really high value people, we sent that caravan down to this Thrombonian colony, and lo and behold, they do have a Thrombonian that has a legendary trait. The market value in this girl, though, is 36,000. I will say she's really good with plants and animals, though. 100% more plant work speed and 200% more plant harvest yield. I mean, we'll try to capture her alive for having wife who come out here and we have some guests i guess no thanks but yeah we're gonna start shooting at these guys is jackal the one no jackal's not the one with the legendary trait she just was able to absorb that shot though jackal is tough we did tag her a few times though i don't know why she's so freaking fast i don't know if we want to be testing our strength on thrombonians is the only thing like we do have better weapons than them but they do outnumber us they got five thrombonians and we only got two in here then again we do have tiger the assassin okay if we have kawaii waifu just kite a bunch of these guys away and yeah these guys are gonna chase kawaii waifu kind of and ooh, that was actually kind of close she almost got attacked there but yeah we're gonna have her just run din woodle's kind of in a bad spot i hope they don't attack him and okay, we killed the first Thrombonian. And it looks like we're gonna have to fight two of them now at once. While Kawai Waifu just kites and crap, didn't Woody run? Or be careful, I guess, or I don't know. Just don't get killed. Okay, he's fine. And down here, did we... Okay, so one of these guys has Sylvanas' blessing. Was it Katros? Oh no, it wasn't. Crap. I thought we knocked out the one that had the legendary trait. It's Crane up here. We haven't even heard her yet. And it's not even like she's gonna be doing that much damage. She's just really tanky. But yeah, let's have Kawai Waifu just kite and let's see if we can knock out crane come on guys knock her out Cartros got back up by the way oh we knocked out crane <laughs> Do we take her? Capture her and leave the area. Yeah, let's do it. I don't know if we even want her to join us. We could sell her though. She would sell for a lot. What, she got up? Oh no, she actually got up while we were picking her up. Oh no. Okay, we knocked her out again. Capture her and leave the area. Okay, phew. I think I misclicked and the person that was carrying her, if you right click with them, like right now I have her selected or never mind. Okay, wait, what is going on? Oh, we're giving her hypothermia and then I think it's going away or something. Capture her again. What's going on with Cartros, by the way? Yeah, she keeps... What keeps happening? Why do people keep dropping Crane? I don't know how we haven't killed her, by the way. It's amazing that we haven't killed her. Stop attacking her, Ross. What are you doing? Capture and leave, dude. You get her? Oh, he got out. Yes. And yep, we got her. That was so weird. Like, whoever was carrying her kept dropping her and attacking her for some reason. It was really strange. That cryo axe was so clutch there because we knocked her out at like pretty full HP and she went unconscious. I think that's why we weren't killing her and we were just knocking her out. I wonder if the mod creator intended for cryo weapons to be good at taking prisoners because they're part of the Viking expanded mod. And it would make sense that a weapon that can free someone and you can take them prisoner, that'd be like the ultimate Viking weapon. So we made it back to base with literally everyone and everything. The wealth of our base went up from 25k to almost 107k. So we got everyone back to base. The reason why we had to send the whole caravan back is because there was
was a Revian scouting party coming for us. And if I do another Rim War playthrough, I don't know if I'm going to use Revians because their combat power was only like 300, but they had 13 Revians in their party and they had two Revian war leaders in their party too. And they just ended up completely obliterating our caravan because yeah, they had good armor and decent melee weapons as well. Thankfully, I did save before the whole encounter though. That probably would have been a run over if I didn't. And I just sent everyone back to the colony. So we've just been kind of chilling for a bit. Thankfully, we have not got any raids or anything because I don't know if our colony could withstand a raid with our wealth at 107k. We got the prisoners back and the Thrombonian Crane only has eight resist. So we're going to be able to recruit her pretty easily. Again, she does have a market value of 36k. So we're not going to leave her around base. I do have kind of a plan for her though. We also got our social guy, Dinwoodle, back to base. He's got 22 resist left. We really need to recruit this guy so we can start leveling up his social and he'll be good at recruiting future prisoners. We were also forced to capture Breland and Tomo. They came in from a massive crash shuttle and they decided they wanted to just leave but we're not going to let them and Tomo only came in with 5 resists. He's down to 3.1. Breland on the other hand had around 20. She's down to 18.5. I don't think we're going to recruit Breland though because her value is 4,500 and we already have someone that's good at social so yeah we're probably going to sell her off and we're actually going to leave as soon as everyone's done with this party. They decided to throw a party and it's going to boost everyone's mood which is great and the party's over. <laughs> After a caravan left, we got a young Thrombonian transport pod crash, and we've been getting a lot of these actually. I just realized how many of these we've been getting. It's because our storyteller has double the amount of allowed population, and so he's actively trying to give us more population through events like this. Ray, the teenage Thrombonian, doesn't have anything that we really need too much, except for her trait Fortune Finder increases forage food amount by 5. That's actually quite a lot and she'd be a really nice addition for our permanent caravan that we got going on the map. She does have seven hours and we're sending someone out to save her right now, but I'm guessing she might get up. Nope, she was not able to get up and Malowitz was able to capture her. Also two days ago, we got another transport pod crash event and I'll just show that. And inside there's already another tortured artist. She does have a burning passion for crafting as well. She also can do a little bit of shooting. She's got a minor passion for it. I think we should pick this girl up because the more people with the tortured artist trait, the merrier I think. And this girl's not gonna increase our wealth by too much. We sent our caravan with our Revian slave down here to Varen Keep and we're gonna trade our slave for theirs. Our Revian slave sells for 23. Hasem the Shaman, I talked about him earlier, and the dude costs 2200 He's got 10 in art. He's not a tortured artist, but he is very neurotic, and he's going to work quicker. And we really need an artist right now, so we're going to pick the dude up. So we have two traders here, and they're apparently at war with each other. So this is going to be interesting. Unfortunately, the Mufflos are just running for the hills. Mufflos, come on, fight. We need your gear to drop. Looks like the Mufflos are not going to drop any of their gear, at least not these down here. But this one could potentially. There's a bunch of kibble, a lot of silver, a lot of hay, a lot of good stuff in this caravan. It's apparently an animal goods trader caravan or something. And uh, nope, it looks like they're gonna leave as well. That's highly unfortunate. So Ray the Thrombonian decided to leave and we're not gonna let her leave. We're gonna capture her and take her to our pretty overloaded prisoner cell. We got five prisoners now. Tomo is down to zero resist though and so we're gonna be able to pick him up. That's gonna be a really good crafter and we'll be able to give his old bed to Ray who does only have five resist. It's going to be really easy to recruit her. Crane also only has 2.2 resist and so that's two Thrombonians we're about to add to our permanent map caravan. So we're not getting raided and for the first time on this playthrough I'm actually trying to get raided by a really massive force because there's this massive infestation below our base and it's getting out of hand. We cannot clear this out on our own. We sent everyone back to base because we're trying to get a massive raid event. Up here it says we got two enemy raids but this is when the trader caravan showed up. We also got a manhunter pack and it was a massive one. There's only three of these things left. They're Fenrirs and they're these giant wolves that have a market value of 6k. They move really quick and they're like the wolf version of Thrombonians, I guess. And they have a lot of built-in armor and they do a lot of DPS. The place where these guys spawned in was really nice though. It was on the west of our base and we had this completely walled off. So they're just kind of chilling out here. There were five of those things. That was a massive event. And now we got this Summit Crab, which apparently is crushing everything in its path. It has 150% armor and a ton of DPS. I don't know if we can pierce its armor and okay yeah the seal is getting killed i don't know what's gonna happen to these oh yep it's destroying the trees and we got finn out here with his short bow i just don't know if we have anything that can pierce this armor oh wait we actually did damage it a little bit it's bleeding wait this thing's easy we're doing a good amount of damage to it which is a short bow okay never mind i thought this was going to be some like massive unstoppable killing machine but it's really not i really wish this thing would have spawned down at the infestation that would have been really useful yep r.i.p the rhino and we killed it we're gonna have quite wife who butcher it for uh, okay.
Okay, that's a lot of chunks. We could actually use those though, because we do have stone cutting research now. We've researched a lot of just minor techs that I haven't really talked about, but we can turn those chunks into blocks that we can use for our defenses now. All right, I think we're gonna have to change the storyteller or something because we just keep getting so many traders. We got two more traders that entered our colony at the same time and they're fighting each other yet again. And yeah, we just need to be doing a more aggressive storyteller, I guess, or I don't know what's going on with this whole thing. I mean, there is action going on. It's just that we're not participating in any of the action. I was looking at our events too, and Ross and Kenzo ended up getting married, by the way, but it keeps saying we're getting raided whenever caravans enter. Like we got these two raids, quote unquote. And last time we had two caravans enter a territory, it says it was an enemy raid and then another enemy raid. We're going to go back to a personal favorite of mine, the Void Storyteller. Void does allow for double the population of a normal storyteller and he will send us raids. So we just need to add some difficulty because yeah, we've not gotten raided in a long time. Before Void starts, hopefully bombarding us with raids. There's a Thrombonian trade caravan on the map that we were able to track down. Now we don't have that good of equipment yet, so I'm not entirely sure how this whole thing's going to play out. There are caravans way down here. They are Thrombonians. We got to remember that. So we need to approach this very tactfully. There is a ruins up here to the northwest though, and we're going to try to build a little bit of a bunker. Oh, Okay, maybe not. Actually, we aggro these guys onto us. Okay, you know what? On second thought, we're gonna have Kawhi Waifu come over here and try to distract these guys. We already tagged one of them. Very nice. We might actually be able to outduel them from range. We'll say a few of our dudes are not shooting though, and I'm not quite sure why that is. They should be able to take cover. Maybe these trees are blocking us. We'll be yellow come over here and shoot from where Finn's shooting from. Wait, Crane. No, don't go there. Oh, nice. We're actually tagging these guys. This is good. Finn got tagged. Oh no. Wait, Finn got absolutely obliterated by this man trap thing. It just spit a poison ball at him. We gotta aim that thing. Dude's gonna bleed out soon too. Do we have any medic? Ringle's got four medical. We're gonna have her try to bandage Finn up. He's getting acid burns. Oh wait, it says he only has one bleed. It said he was gonna bleed out or something, but I don't know what's going on with that. We ended up killing one of the man traps. We're gonna aim the other one. Ross got hit by one too. Oh no, he's getting burns. Or she, rather. We gotta aim the other man trap. We killed the other one. Okay, very nice. Yeah, those things are not tanky. Finn's actually okay. We don't need to have Wrangle bandage him up. Oh, and they knocked out this cover area. Let's have Kawhi Waifu back up and then use this thing as cover now. We also want to aim these camels because if we do take the camels out, they'll drop stuff for us. We're going to send Crane down here and we're going to have her shoot from this wall area. I'm still not sure why people, like, why is Kawhi Waifu not shooting over this tree? Does she have cover behind the tree? Yeah, she does. She has a little bit of cover behind the tree. Let's aim this camel, try to get it hit a few times and then let's aim this man trap too. We want to make sure that we don't knock too many of these guys out right now because yeah they might run. Okay we knocked out Kakalis. They're still not running. Do these guys have any? Yeah they have melee people down here. Okay we're not going to charge in. I was thinking like maybe we could charge them with our melees but no. Their melees for some reason are not charging and nice we knocked out one of their camels had a masterwork axe or something on it. Let's go for the other camels now. We do want to make sure we win this by the way but we also want to get some loot. Aim that camel. Oh yeah we hit it twice. Three times. Four times that camel's gonna go down oh nice we got it a bunch of silver on that camel wait and then this one died too it didn't have much on it though all right cool now we can just aim these guys my wife is getting kind of lit up here which is not ideal and yeah these guys have cover like as much cover as us almost i think 16 percent chance to hit this dude let's move crane up and nice we won the caravan battle we didn't even have to fight their melee guys we took out enough of their range people we got white over here that's knocked out as well who apparently is very bad at shooting has shooting amateur which lowers her shooting accuracy that's worse than not having any shooting trait and she's also got poor aim which lowers her melee and shooting accuracy okay we probably want to sell this girl maybe assuming we can pick her up which i think we'll be able to and yeah we can just capture her from the map screen let's grab this masterwork steel battle axe we cannot use it yet until we get long blades there's a lot of melee dps though has a chance to stun the target as well which is nice gives a little bit of dodge too can't be used with shields though unfortunately we grabbed all the items they had a lot of pemmican by the way this is gonna be nice because we can use this while we're on the caravan and a lot of herbal medicine and that is where we're gonna end this episode i feel kind of weird about this playthrough because i've been swapping storyteller so much and i've been changing around a lot of the parameters if you guys would like to see this run continue though then drop a like the next run i'm gonna do is gonna be a completely random starting colonist and it's gonna be just a normal dude it's not gonna be like a revian or thrombonian or anything would you guys rather see a fresh start or would you rather see this campaign continue let me know in the comment section and yeah with that i want to thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.